I'm really grateful that this is where we are today. So I want to thank you for your patience um, and your persistence and your partnership in that work today. Um, it's really critical to us moving forward. I know that when I left that meeting and, you know, I've seen Diana and Ruthie and Rohan and Lily and Emma and Paige and Dawn and all of you over all of this time, my intention that day was to you, for you to feel like you were heard and valued and respected and that we wanted you to be part of the process. That I think I said, I don't know where it's going to go, but I know that we need you alongside us in the process. So 610 days later, it's a pretty incredible result um, for hanging in with us. Um, so that passes. Four, zero, and no extension. I think it was definitely nerve wracking. I mean, we definitely really wanted, I mean, obviously really wanted this to pass, but you know, understanding that there is a lot of work that has to go into this, actually crafting the document. But I think it was really empowering as well because, you know, the district, like we've reiterated so many times today, they have really, it's been a collaborative process, especially in these last couple months, that it was, you know, nerve wracking. I mean, you know, I think we all had the jitters today, realizing that this is a really big, big vote that's coming up. But I think we were all really, you know, like it was a mixture of nervous, you know, work has to be done, but also relief and faith in the school district. So a couple things that they added was the language. They they strengthened the like background slash reasons to do this, which uh, honestly is one of the biggest uh, components for the urgency aspect. So really, it you know just by changing the actual language, uh, we added a bigger urgency component. Uh, but I think the other thing, the main component that was added was actual was an actual target date. And in this case, it is 2045, aligning with state uh, state legislation. Uh, but you know, having that commitment, that time that we have to get things done by, was really um, something that we were really happy about. We've grown up in this like basically catastrophic situation where there's all these natural disasters happening at the same time and it's really scary honestly and I've felt a lot of guilt actually even though I'm just a kid you know like people will say you know you need to be using less water and watering your lawn less and I've felt guilty even though I know like it's probably not my fault but you know like ultimately I want to do something about it and that's really been you know a driving force for why I joined this campaign why I've done so much for it you know and seeing my other you know all these other teenagers doing the same thing it's so inspiring and it's like really motivating to just work with other kids like me so I grew up right here in Southern California so throughout my childhood I've just watched the climate crisis go from bad to worse I've seen the firefighters the wildfires they get more and more frequent and I've seen them set off my asthma I saw the sun turn red for the first time in fifth grade. I've seen grass get drier and drier. I've watched droughts come more frequently, and then they go, and then they come again. So I've grown up as most of the kids these days have in this world that's slowly been burning. So at that glacier where it should have been, I was so sad and so afraid. I want to hike with my children to that glacier someday. I want to go to my childhood beaches and look at the ocean when I'm older. I want to run in the rain that is coming more than twice a year. I want to raise kids without feeling guilty that I am bringing them into a dying world. So this policy, policy 3510.1, I don't know, there's lots of numbers, but it's not going to single-handedly fix the climate crisis, but it's a step in the race. I would know I'm a runner, and with enough steps, a race is won. So we have to take the step for all of us and for our futures.